Welcome to the Pawn Sacrifice channel. Today I'm going to be running through a tack signal converter. This is to go from a 5 volt signal to 12 volt. The reason I need to do this is that the 1.8T engine, the tack signal, uh, rev counter signal comes off of the ECU, I think it's pin 6, and that's sent out as a, as a low voltage or 5 volt signal that, that comes out there, and that's what most modern engines are set up to do. The 924S has these dials, so that's the old 1980s uh, VDO gauges, and then this one. Uh, runs off of a 12 volt signal which would come from the switch side of the ECU and what happens is, or what has happened is when I plug the new signal into this one it just sits there. Um, I haven't really given it any revs but I'm led to believe that what happens is if you've got the old style gauges collecting off the new ones it'll just start, it reads very low and it'll just jump about all over the place and not give you a, a correct reading on any car that's not great. On um, this one, which is going to be a track car, it's fairly important that we get an accurate signal coming off of here. So there's a few different options for this. You can buy converters um, that, that kind of work in line. Um, if you've got an aftermarket ECU then chances are there's an adapter or something that you can get to just plug in there. And uh, what I'm going to look at today is an option to do this DIY instead just using a few simple little things. So there's a coil, a transistor and a resistor. And there's a few instructions out there on how to do this. Um, originally I found this diagram uh, on the, I think it was the Megasquirt forum and it didn't really mean a great deal to me because I didn't quite understand what everything was. Likewise, a couple of the videos that I've seen they don't really go into depth. Um, they kind of there's some assumed knowledge there, uh, which I didn't have. So it took me a while to actually get my head around all of this. So what I want to do is just walk through this stage by stage from the from the very start um, and just explain how all of this works. The if we start with actually what these things are doing. Um, so from the relay, it's just using the coil. So. The, you've got the um, power on one side, ground on the other, and it's just creating that circuit and just creating and collapsing the, the magnetic field on there. And that's then what um, helps them um, simulate the signal that you would be getting from the uh, ignition coil. So that's fairly straightforward. Then there's this, which is a resistor, and this just controls the electric current. Uh, it helps to sort out um, or flatten out any spikes that's going through there. That's a 1k resistor which I just bought online and this was the main thing that got me which is the transistor and yeah that again really cheap just bought that online. It's a 2N5551 um, uh, transistor. I'll just put up a, a diagram here to explain it. You've got a curved surface, um, curved back on one side and a flat on the other side and that is how you know which pins are which. So going from left to right on the flat side uh, you've got the emitter. Um, in this instance this is going to be going down to the um, uh, to the ground then the, the base which is the middle or number two pin uh, that collects the ECU signal and then the ground, uh, oh, sorry, the collector which then clears off to the tag signal. And when we put it all together, this is a new diagram that I've created or just a version of the, the one that I didn't quite understand. Hopefully this fully explains it. So you just get the, the, the power going into the, um, into the relay uh, on one side and then from the other side the, there's a cable which goes out to the um, to the taco and then the other one comes down to the collector side of the transistor. Uh, you've got the middle one which is the base which goes through the resistor. This isn't directional um, so just chuck it in any old how and that goes through the uh, so you get the signal goes through there and then out to the um, 
uh, out to the ECU signal and then the, the final one just goes off and collects to the ground. So what I like to do to understand this or just to make sure it all works is before I try and strip this down and, and actually put something together is just get a bunch of these uh, little crocodile clips and just wire everything up just in sequence so we'll run through that now uh, hopefully it will give you an idea of, of how this all puts together we'll try it on the car and make sure it works and then we'll come back and start looking at actually making this a bit more compact and a little smaller so starting with the coil we need 85 and 86 so we've got 86 which I'm going to use for my live so that's the switch power so we'll connect that one up and 85 now that goes to the uh, that's the signal so that's let's have that one coming out so that one there green one will go to the taco from here this is going to come down to the little transistor here and from the front that's going to go to the what's that going to the collector which is this one here so from that side we'll connect that one up bend these around a bit just to make sure they don't touch so we've got the collector and we've got the base so this is the signal that's coming from the ECU but what it is doing is it comes from the ECU uh, but it needs to go through the resistor first so that will go oops that will just sit in line and then we'll have another connector which will just that will then just feed out to the uh, ECU signal cable. The only one that's left is the emitter and this is just going to our ground so I'll just pick a ground connector on the car and that's essentially it. That worked which is obviously good. The one thing I would point out is on the I think I showed on there on the back you've got the green connector which is where the ECU goes in or the, the this signal goes in and the middle bottom one there's a black wire going in there I'd managed to I think somewhere in removing all the engine wires basically disconnect that signal so just check that that's still live because if you're doing this conversion chances are you've somewhere along the line taken away that power connection uh, so just check and make sure that's there. Now in terms of the adapter itself it would be possible I could just build this in line um, relatively straightforward to just put something together and connect everything up to these pins and just put it in there and it would be you know quite easily functioning what I want to try and do is just see if I can put it in a little chock box if we start first of all with looking at the coil one thing you may have noticed is the there's a um, ticking noise which this what that is is where the coils going back and forth is that little switch there and this is the way that the coil or uh, the relay operates is that's going back and forth and vibrating now what you can do as a starting point is just snap that off uh, and it won't make that sound you don't actually need that there so it doesn't matter what I am going to do though is I've got another coil that I'm going to try or another relay that I'm going to try this with the reason being is this one the, the the connectors on the bottom are glued um, I could just go around and cut those or, or trim around that so that they can be pushed through but what I want to start off by doing is I just want to have a look and see if I can do this just by taking the coil out uh, or taking the whole relay out one um, 
and this is just kind of stuck in there take the whole thing out and then just take everything off that I don't need until I'm just left with the uh, 85 and 86 pins and the coil itself so I'm going to start by doing this so that is the, the coil which is fully stripped down now and I've tried that in my little um, crocodile clip config and that works what I want to do is I've just got these chalk boxes um, which I want to use I've been through on the other one and just taken out all of these parts here and trimmed down one of the ends the idea being that it will this config with the little connector on the end so that I can have this uh, pretty much just plug and play there because I'm not very good at soldering what I'm going to do is use these things so that will help me connect up uh, a couple of the wires and then I'm just going to have to solder the other bits together um, it's going to need to be fairly compact to fit into there um, but yeah let's just work through this now and see if we can get something to this sort of size I've set up this soldering iron um, what I am going to do uh, is just yeah well I'm just going to give this a go I'm not brilliant at soldering but hopefully it'll work and give me something that's going to stay together ground live signal in signal out crimp the red wire to a spade connector to be attached to the coil with the blue wire you want two strands going in and then crimp both of those to a spade connector on the coil then the green wire gets soldered to the resistor and then solder on a tail wire to that as well just check now on to the transistor and then solder the ground wire to the emitter and then take the green wire section and then solder that to the base and then just get the blue wire and then solder that onto the connector plug that into the coil and it's done Right, that little collection of wires and whatnots worked. So I just need to package it all up now so it works through the connector and through here. Uh, very pleased. So yeah, let's just get this protected. The main thing is it's just going to be putting some heat shrink around some of these bits so that if when everything's folded over they they come into contact, um, there's not going to be any shorting out of, of any of the things. There we have the final job with the connector that's now super glued on and a little pad on the top there just so that when the lid's closed everything is nice and snug and nothing is rattling around inside which it was doing without the pad there. Um, it's a nice neat solution I think which just connects on like so. Uh, yeah, that's... Um, I think job well done from my perspective. I need to mount that in the car. I might use Velcro, double-sided sticky Velcro, just because I want it to be cushioned. Uh, my soldering isn't great. Um, I suspect there'll be people looking at this and know what they're doing, cursing me for, for my poor work. Um, I am gonna make up a spare so that it's there, just in case I need it. Um, but yeah, the vibrations can cause um, soldering to fail if it's not done properly, so uh, that's the reason for doing that. Um, and yeah, the only other learning from it is the cable that I put in um, for the, the signal, which goes through the resistor, is probably just should have made that cable a bit longer um, because there's space in there and room to have wire wrapped around. Um, from one end looped back round through the resistor and then back in again um, sort of almost like that so that the resistor's running along the full length 
uh, rather than trying to bend things as, as much as possible. So that's probably the only thing that I'll do differently next time, but otherwise it works. A couple of other ways of doing this, if you're not wanting to, to do the little box, I've done the box just to keep everything uh, in nice and neat together and just to help really protect my poor craftsmanship inside so I'm kind of compensating for that. What you could do though is actually just build this in line so you would still need a coil to connect to so the, the four pin one for example and all you would do is just have the earth wire going into the um, pin one on the, the transistor the signal coming from the ECU you would just put the signal wire resistor and then cable or just connect it directly to pin 2 on the uh, transistor that then comes up on the earth side of the coil you have the power going on to the uh, the other side and all you do is just the the wire that's coming in for the transistor you just double cable that so two cables crimped in the one connector and then that goes off to the signal and that would work uh, just as well just make sure that you well you don't have to make sure um, but I would advise opening it up and just snapping off that little arm uh, that's inside that goes backwards and forwards and makes a racket so that's that's one way the other way is a bit more complicated uh, to explain I'm probably not going to explain this very well so here's a diagram that I've kind of put together where you use the um, you, you take the get a get one of these uh, relays where you can take the top off take the take the top off and then you've got the two pins which you're using anyway and then you just use the other two for these connectors and all you do is just solder the um, the transistor and the resistor basically just going round the the different pins um, and, and that's another way of, of going about doing that and yeah that's pretty much it uh, nice simple cheap solution the the parts when you buy them you can only tend to buy them in, in large numbers particularly the transistors um, but just make sure you get the right size one the lettering for the transistors is actually on the on the surface of them and it's an absolute pain this is the one thing I would say is if you are buying these and it is a mixed packet the ones that I bought had nothing on them and they just have the numbering on there which I'd be astonished if you can see so I ended up having to dig out this little magnifying glass thing to be able to see what was going on and, and which one was which and just went through and labelled them the the 1k resistors I was able to just buy buy in a pack but actually they're 